Uh, Diego, we folks, uh, Chris Melton. I just, I think I started the recording. Is it working now? Okay, yes, it is. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Gerald O'Dwyer. I am your proctor, my your course leader uh, for these events. Uh, we've been doing these uh, conferences since 2015. To just give you a little background, Blackmore Connects was started by five private equity firms that came to me in 2015 and said, Gerald, deals are more expensive than ever before. We have more competition. The competition is from our own LPs who are setting up their own private equity firms. Our uh, private equity firms are blowing up. And when they do, they become five new private equity firms. There's more independent sponsors like Blackmore. Blackmore is considered a family office independent sponsor. What we do, there is so much money available. We package up deals with executives like you. So there's more, more of us out there. Uh, just to give you some numbers back in 2012, or maybe 2005, I think there was close to 8,000 private equity firms worldwide. From the latest numbers, I've heard as high as 22, uh, low as 22, high as 24, and there may more being formed every day. So that creates competition uh, in the marketplace. So as a result, these firms were saying to us, in order to differentiate ourselves in the lower middle market deals, three to 15 million EBITDA, is we need to have an angle. Investment banks are telling us, again, this is what the P firms are telling us, investment banks are telling us that your money is not green enough, not enough to go on in the process. So private equity firms typically buy deals through investment bankers. Their preference is to buy deals, of course, not from an invest through an investment banker, but Heck, uh, almost everyone, every deal has some kind of broker, investment banker involved, no matter what. And the investment bankers and brokers are saying to the PE firms, um, if you want to continue and be continue with this process, you have to show us you have a CEO. You have to show us that you have strategic intelligence because the owners in these privately held companies that are being selling are leaving money in the deal. And they stay with the deal typically 12 to 24 months, and then they get fired. And you can probably guess why. Uh, however, don't tell the owners that. Uh, they, um, some owners do great and stay on, but a lot of them aren't built, built for the speed. And you, it's a muscle. And by the way, 75% of executives that come in from the outside are also fired because they're not ready for the speed. Too many things going on because of the compressed time frame. So the P firms said, we need strategic angles and we believe that executives, can you help us build benches? And uh, my, what I said to them, no, I can't uh, help you build a bench because we have recruiters. They knew we have recruiters, plus we, we do everything from the private equity investor mindset in all our recruiting. I said, if our recruiters um, let's say you want someone like Susan here in banking, financial services, that's like boiling the ocean. They could be full time doing this and not get any money for you. If you want us to do this, that's going to be 15 grand a month per recruiter, per industry that you want. And the P firm said, no, we're not going to, we can't do that. I knew they were going to say no. What we can do is give you a, a, a very high fee when a deal gets done, 60, 70 percent instead of 33 and a third percent of their salary. But we can't do that because, as you know, Gerald, until there's something to bill against, we cannot hire outside consultants. When there's an LOI, um, we can start hiring consultants. Uh, but uh, to pay you a fee like recruiting uh, for your recruiter division, by the way, we have five divisions. That's one of our divisions to help us on our own deal, we're going to have to come up with something different. So we came up with, two years later, we got these five firms, AC, uh, let's see, who was RFE, Kid and Company, Huron, a few others, I've, I've forgotten their names. And they helped us create a framework and a curriculum for the virtual conferences you see today. What they wanted, they don't want turnover. 
they don't want to get rid of executives like yourself when they bring you on. They just hate the turnover because it means they have to get involved. They have to go hire someone. And by the way, they like to do it with people they meet over a period of 18 months. Uh, They want to get to know executives. Okay. And that's why they call it building the bench. And, And so they wanted us to build a curriculum that's measurable and repeatable to help executives like you monetize your background into an acquisition based field thesis, which is a perspective on the industry and a segment in the industry. And they wanted us to give you the education about what it's like to be in a private equity firm from 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 the due diligence all the way to exit. And that's a key concept. This is not about getting a job. If you're in the and you can have that kind of pathway, but it is a very difficult pathway to just go and try and get a private equity job because they don't like talking to job seekers. It kind of it puts you in another category, which you'll learn about more as we go in the workshop. So they wanted us to develop a curriculum that was low cost for them and low cost for executives. So two years later, in 2017, we launched our first workshop and uh, our first conference. Okay, back then it didn't. uh, and, And they were in person. But in person, eventually began to become so expensive. As you will see, I'm going to go over some of the conference costs we uh, that we encourage you to go to ACG, iGlobal, AMAA. It became very expensive. And uh, so we had to look at different lower cost ways to do it. So we developed these low cost virtual conferences. The conference that you're all in is number 48. Anyway, that's kind of the origin story about it. So let me get in. Uh, is David Karshak here? Karshak. Sorry, David. Hey, Gerald. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Hi, David. Gerald. Let's can spotlight. Okay? I can. Let's spotlight David. Okay. And David is my partner here in in this kind of onboarding procedure. David, introduce yourself and your background. And before I do, I first met David, um, like many of you. So David is a very accomplished executive strategic planner, um, and he'll go deeper into his background. But one of the things I really appreciate about David and his skill set is his ability to listen and find nuances of where growth is in your thesis or in your playbook or and and the importance of why that's important in private equity. If you're going to be interesting and if you're going to be have a great exit to get those returns, three three times cash on cash. We personally, myself and Elena, like to get uh, eight to ten times cash on cash returns. We just did that recently with one of our logistics services. How do we do it? It's about adjacencies. David, introduce yourself, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Dave Kashak. I have a 25 plus year career history uh, leading businesses from six to 15 million EBITDA. And I have a couple of deal, deal theses, uh, mostly in the B2B manufacturing space. Like Gerald said, I focus on growing businesses. So, you know, it's all about growth. And <clears throat> I, I can't emphasize enough what Gerald's saying about how important it is to have an idea for who's the strategic exit partner? What are you building that's gonna be attractive investment for somebody else? So doing that upfront is critical. And that's how I'm looking to hopefully engage with the group here and and help you as you need. So open invitation, I'll send my contact info. Gerald, I really appreciate, really appreciate what you do, connecting people, connecting opportunities. So if if you don't hear a thing I say, uh, just know that, you know, Gerald's, Gerald's probably one of the best I've worked with in my career with connecting uh, people to opportunities. It's really great. Thank you, Dave. So Dave, you could look at Dave is going to be our chief ombudsman and connector for all of you connecting with each other. Dave's uh, recently attended the program. He goes, gosh, you know, I just wish uh, the executives that were here saw the opportunity to connect with each other. So we're gonna start off right now as part of our agenda. I'm gonna show you the agenda here. And by the way, um, let's go and agenda. 
Here we go. Okay, this is a high level agenda. And it's also, if you go to your, uh, go to the invite for today, it's here. So introductions, first thing we're going to have you do, and you heard Dave do it. Uh, he talked about his name, his title, industry. If he's had a PE exits, he didn't mention that, but I didn't introduce this. And P&L, that's a, uh, a key thing I'm going to have you each do. We're going to be talking about maximizing the conference uh, benefits, networking within your group and private equity, building your group. Um, we're going to talk about the professional development in the P world. This is key. Uh, P is a journey, investment and education, knowledge building, conference insight, and cost. So think of Blackmore and Blackmore Connects is a portal to the private equity for world from the executive perspective. Nothing else exists like this. This was built at the request. Blackmore Connects was built at the request of private equity firms to give you a sense of the landscape so you can take control of your own education and networking. And all we do is facilitate it to get it faster. My main reason to, to exist as Blackmore is to get deals done. But in order to do it, because we're executive first, we need to lay a framework and groundwork and build, help you build the, the ideas, the thought process, the actions needed to have a great exit. We want to work with you to have a great exit. And that's really key. Um, well over 75% of the executives that I talk to that have worked in PE that come through uh, meetings, I ask them, did you have a successful exit? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, they were working for PE but didn't have a successful exit. Why? Because they didn't know what they didn't know to ask. That's a very, very costly lesson, given how long it takes to find deals and get deals done to exit. So we're going to be discussing that. So let's quickly go around the room, and I want you to do 15 seconds, really keep it short, name, title, Industry, p &L. if you've had an exit, what was your cash and cash returns? That's a key thing. Let's start with Susan. Sure. Hi, I'm Susan Evangeline Bagg, and I, uh, my last role was VP of Strategy and Transformation at Wells Fargo for the CTO organization, which is a $1 billion organization. And I've uh, spent 15 years uh, in very large transformations, top 10 global uh, transformations in the banking financial services area uh, of budgets of up to 250 million and 30 million uh, OPEX um, cost saves, uh, okay. operational experience saves. And okay, you're um, over 15 we, seconds now, Susan. So okay. two more seconds. Right. Well, I do be... not have a. I do right. not have a P exit, and I'm here to learn and uh, maybe bolster my P career from here. Well, not maybe. You can if yes, you, if can. you treat this as a journey, folks, not as a a, a job seeker. So I'm going to go to I'm going to get my stopwatch out because as you're going to see, and in private equity, as we go <laughs> along, there is we're going to be developing a cadence, a rigor for uh, talking to private equity. So you're always thinking about what can I do to market my brand to private equity. And you get 15 to 30 seconds. We don't have that long today. Uh, we'll be doing that at, at some of the other workshops. Okay, let's go to Gary Hick Hickox. Hi. Um, good morning. I'm Gary Hickox. I have about 40 years experience in corporate business enterprise and running small or large businesses. My largest business I ran was a billion dollars, and that was for the AT&T Corporation and our EBITDA. Um, that year was um, 100 million. That was, you're at 17, 18. I'm going to have to stop you there. You're going to shorten up. Later, you'll have a whole 30 seconds, but today it's only just to get a quick uh, insight. So learning to parse your, your wording in the private equity world because these people have so much little time. And here's the other reason why you're going to learn how to just quickly get things in short things and what matters. And I'm not going to tell you what matters yet is because PE firms have the attention span of, of a gnat. It, it, and with executives, they want to <laughs> avoid you. And, and I am not kidding. Even with me, with deals, they don't have a lot of time. You know, so learning how to do that. Thank you, Gary. We're going to go on to the next person. Um, 
Let's go to Tammy. Hi, uh, Tammy Phillips, uh, most recently CEO um, for equipment manufacturing, um, did entertain um, private equity. It was unsuccessful in 2018 and looking forward to learning more. Uh, the revenue was 10 million, EBITDA 1 million. Okay, excellent. Nice, short, sweet. Claudio. Good morning. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, so my background is uh, industrial manufacturing and technology services. I played various roles from CEO to CIO. Uh, last role was a CIO position for a $4 billion company. I have one successful exit in software and services, and the largest PNL I've ran was $125 million. Okay, great. 18 seconds, right when the area. Good. And notice he got right into some of the numbers. Great. Let's go to Jonathan. Hi, I'm Jonathan Cohen. I'm a, I've been an executive uh, for materials and industrial company uh, globally. Uh, I've managed PNL of 10 to 50 million EBITDA, doing a lot of growth uh, and no no experience with PE, but a lot of experience in acquisition and uh, integration. 17 seconds. 18 seconds. Okay, not a problem. So notice. You know, it's we're just in the in in our in the typical world for most all the people come in. You're we're just not used to that short and sweet, and it's not a problem. And I I didn't prepare you for this other than I sent out an agenda. Let's go to the other, uh, Jonathan. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jonathan Grice. I'm a pharmacist, and I served as president of our family's company, growing it to $200 million a year and a $15 million EBITDA. Uh, I'm looking for private equity uh, going forward to scale that up. Okay, good. Short 12, 12 seconds. Nice. Okay, again, this is just the purpose. We're going to get be getting into the reasons behind all of this later. Let's go on to... Chris Melton, how do I turn, uh, by the way, if you went, Tammy, Susan, and others, Claudio, turn off your cameras so other people just top, pop up. Tom Davis. Tom Davis, aerospace background, various C-suite positions, two with private equity, one with a four-banger for $2 billion, have run three different entities, all with P&Ls over $1 billion, uh, mostly for Honeywell prior to PE. Okay. Four banger, do you mean four times cash and cash returns, Tom? Yes. Okay, great. And uh, so, Tom, I like, you know, you, you're going to hear when people have some PE experience, they, they, you're going to hear a different quality of, of conversation that they have, often because of it's just part of the water they swim in. This is why going to private equity conferences like the ACG, AMAA are going to be important is they get you in the water and you start and walking and talking, which is part of the first step to credibility to stay top of mind, get top of mind so you can get opportunities, get deals funded, uh, get higher equity. Now, Tom, what you had a four banger. Uh, did you have an exit? Was it? Um, uh, um, long-term capital gains, or was it bonus money? Um, long-term capital gains. Okay, that's the creme. That is the best, folks. This is what we're all in here. We're not in here to get bonuses, okay? Because you're taxed at very high rates. You're here, and in fact, I have a webinar upcoming on, on exit planning, pre-exit planning, where we're going to be working on the strategies to make sure you do the right things. So you don't have to come up with a whole bunch of cash or you're saving cash, uh, depending on what kind of options you have. These are going to be important things that save you and make you millions. And I'm not kidding, millions. It's all about design for exit. You're not going to be able to grok all of this in you know, one set of workshops because this is a journey. It is a profession. And there's layers after layers after layers. And that's why we want you to do your get going on your deal thesis is because the deal thesis is the start of how private equity thinks. They all go, have a thesis and, a, and then a deeper thesis when they have a company, but they have general objectives. All right, Tom, thank you so much. Turn off your camera. Let's go on to the next person there, Charlie. Uh, Charlie White. Um, multi-channel retail 
is my um, industry. I've had three successful uh, private equity exits. Um, the uh, revenue has ranged from 25 million to 2.1 billion. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go on to um, next first camera off. Um, Mike Cook. Hey, Michael Cook, real estate related property services. Um, one exit, uh, two times, um, focused on rolling out property management companies. Okay, thank you. Next is uh, 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 Jeffrey Boyle. Okay, sure. So I'm Jeff Boyle. i am uh, been in the biotech industry uh, as franchise heads and, and president. Uh, largest revenue uh, I've managed is 280 million, and I'm new to private equity. Okay, and no matter where you are, folks, you're new. This is a very important distinction. No matter where you're at, if you were at one private equity firm, you've been at one. If you've been at two, you've been at two. There are so many nuances in private equity, it makes my head spin. I've been at this business 25 years. Every time I go to a conference and I have 20 plus last year, I'm like, oh my God, there's a whole new mix of private equity. I won't go into them today, but you need, you're going to need to discover how to find out what kind of private equity firms you're dealing with because it infects your exit. It affects structure, impacts exit. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Uh, let's go to Brenda or Brendan. I can't see all the names. Sorry. No, uh, Brenda. Brenda. Yeah. Hello. Hello, can okay. you hear me? Yep, go. Yep. yep. Hi, Brenda Mullahan, healthcare provider in IT space. No exits, 20 million, you know. Okay, thank you. And no exits? No. Exits are coming for you, Brenda. They're coming. And instead of you making all that money you did for other people, you're going to be getting that back end. That's life changing. We're playing the game of the rich. That's part of the why I got in this business is to roll money in at the top level. Gene Kim. Hey, Gerald. Uh, Gene Kim, uh, currently working as an innovation consultant for a consulting firm, uh, north of 250 million PNL responsibilities, um, private equity experience indirectly, but not directly working on investment theses. Okay, great. Uh, next, and right there. Okay, John Rolowski. Uh, uh, Hi, everybody. I'm John Rolowski, most recently Chief Operating Officer for a management company. I've got 30 years experience in senior housing and senior healthcare. Our exit for one property we developed uh, that I had equity in was $98 million, P&L about $200 million. Okay, good. Only 18 seconds. Ian Smith. Hi, Ian Smith, uh, uh, Automotive Financial Services Executive, worked in four international markets, UK, Canada, Brazil, UK, balance sheet responsibility of $54 billion and EBITDA of greater than 600 million. Okay, uh, great, thank you. Let's go to uh, Peter Simmons. Hi everyone, how are you? Uh, thank you, Gerald. Um, I'm Pete Simmons, Chief Operating Officer, Premier Lab Solutions, PMD Acquisitions, um, Primary experience is healthcare, ancillary services, diagnostics, laboratory, startups, and scaling the business. 45 million in revenue, 5 million in EBITDA. Working through the exits now. Okay, great. Uh, and again, folks, you're going to, uh, as you, other people aren't here, but you're going to meet other executives who are exiting right now from private equity firms. Um, many, uh, what we suggest is you, uh, the, the moment, 18 to 24 months, you want to be building your next funnel. There's not likely ever to be a private equity deal waiting for you, no matter how great of an exit you had with your private equity firm. It's just too hard for the P firms to find a deal. Janendra. Hi, uh, Jitendra Vats, National Planning and Analysis in the technology sector. Last few years with recruiting tech. Help scale up the company from 1 billion to 7 billion over five years with 30% profitability. Three private uh, 
equity slash venture backed companies, one successful exit. Okay. Uh, Mandu, if I say that Hi. right. It's Madhu. Hi, Madhu Palkar. Um, I'm currently a board member at a mid market PE firm. I've also been a chief strategy officer and a chief operating officer in both private equity as well as Optum and United Health Group, 20 plus years in healthcare. And I've had over you know $1 billion in PL experience. Okay, great. Okay, everyone go ahead and turn on your cameras. Uh, what I'd like you to do is find the invite today, if you can, the invite, and we're going to go through it that way. And you can be, I'm going to put it on my screen in just a second as I clean it up. So one of the reasons I wanted you all to get a quick insight by hearing from each other is to create this community. There is it to try and find the 50 plus executives that are going to be in this program. And uh, that have um, the intention to, and I really want to keep doing, getting this in your head, to have a great exit, to have the mindset of trying to get a job is short-sighted, folks. It's like you're right there instead of, hey, no, this is about are the conditions right for the right exit? Is this the right partner for me? Uh, is the structure going to lead a good exit? This is part of what you're going to be learning over time. Folks, we're not going to get to everything because this is a master class. And we, what we're going to be doing is we're building a framework. We will touch on, on many of these topics. But to go deep, we give you, we're going to be giving you extra information. Now, if I if I didn't, uh, if you didn't introduce yourself, uh, please raise your hand because I, you know, I can't see everyone. If you didn't reach your, uh, do it. Please raise your hand, and Chris Melton will uh, call upon you, and then we'll do that. So if you didn't do that because your camera's off or you're in a different mode, please uh, just give a shout out here. Okay. So if you go to your to the invite, I'm going to go. Oh, and the invite has two parts: the nicely formatted. And then the second part of it has the um, uh, has the um, has the links or sometimes both of them actually do. Now I can see it. I was having uh, problems converting the links. OK, let's. Uh, so we did the introduction. OK, now conference. Let me the, set the table. Private equity is iterative. There are layers. It's like an onion. And it's almost impossible to get all the layers um, of it uh, from due diligence to exit. This conference is going to be mostly focused right now on getting the attention of private equity, establishing your brand, uh, developing your value proposition, your creation plan, reaching out to owners. Why? Private equity firms want people like them, right? You want to be part of the club. You, everything that we are doing in this program was designed over the years to mirror private equity process so that your things are going faster, you're compressing time, and you have a higher exit multiple. Our target, Elaine and I, when we do put money in deals, it is to get eight times cash on cash return. The minimum cash on cash returns is three times. You're going to be learning about ec debt and equity. You're going to be learning that the moment you go to work for a private equity uh, firm, you're running a turnaround. Why? Can anyone uh, uh, think about a time when you had more than 50, maybe 70 percent debt on your company? You're going to want to prepare an action plan to manage cash. And that's going to be part of your skill. Now, you don't have to be the one to do all that. You can go get resources and know who your resources are. And this is why ACG, AMAA, iGlobal, these other kind of these other conferences, they're about assembling your outside team, consultants, lawyers, bankers, accountants. You, there's all these different players in the M&A world. They're unique to the M&A world. It's not just going out and talking to any lawyer or any account, you've got to find players that know 
the private equity world. You're going to be learning to assemble these people on your team and you're going to build them into your deal structure so you're not left holding the bag, which is one of the reasons 75% of the executives get thrown under the bus. It's just the, it's just so much, so uh, so much is happening at the same time. So it's very, very important that you keep in mind this is iterative. You're, um, we had feedback in the last conference. I heard the same things so many times. Great. You know what? I'm I'm in CrossFit right now, and you know, basically every few days, there's some part of the exercises that we're repeating. Why? Why is that? We're building muscles, folks. So you've got to get in the mode is that you're building the ability to hold these concepts constant over time. And that takes reiteration, reiteration, and reiteration. So again, the concept to keep in mind is this is a journey. I like to use the analogy uh, of a farmer. You know, the mistake that, uh, you know, the new farmer makes, uh, he spreads the seeds, wakes up the, for the corn, wakes up the next day, and then digs up the corn and goes, where's my corn? That mindset, put that aside. You can have that mindset, but that is not the mindset that's going to work here, okay? So these, what you're doing with each other, there's tracks that you're on. We have the workshops, which you're working and learning from other executives, and then there's the private equity, okay? And then there's a whole nother track, if you want to call it, is building your, your private equity resources for deals, okay? That is where you're going to ACG events. Uh, um, I Global AMA. Uh, we sponsor um, when you when you buy a, con a table at a at a at uh, private equity conferences. We get to bring uh, many many extra folks at extremely big discounts. So, for example, there are people here uh, that know I'm going to ACG Dealmax. The price just to get in registration. Uh, for is twenty seven hundred three thousand, depending on who you're at, plus your hotel, plus your airfare, plus your incidentals. Now, those that are coming with me under the Blackmore name, under our Blackmore sponsorship, are only paying five ninety five. Okay, so we are a portal to big discounts depending on the event. We have a healthcare conference that we're a sponsor of, uh, two hundred off on that one, and then there's other events: ACG Dallas, ACG Philly, and others that we're going to, you're welcome to join us uh, if you like. So um, once again, what we're talking about is getting the most out of the conferences. You're gonna hear many things over and over and over and eventually connect the dots. Then what you're doing is you're listening for one more dot to connect the dot that changes the dots, okay? So this is an important aspect uh, to, uh, about the conferences. I have a saying that I like to use based on an old Buddhist saying. You may have uh, heard it. It says like this, you never dip your toe into the same river twice. With these conferences, last year I did 20, plus the private equity, these private equity conferences, they're never different. When I go to the ACG conferences, there's something new happening in private equity, and it changes my perspective because I'm connecting the dot. So I go there to find the unexpected nugget that I can then use to create more value. And this is an important aspect. What you're going to be learning to do as we go through is you're going to be distinguishing what is your brand. And I, I, here's a quick answer about what it is. It is not that you're a good operating guy. OK, that you're a good operator is not enough in this game. OK, it's going to be something else. So the conferences, conferences are where you practice testing your value proposition on what you're going to do to help those people win their game. The goal is what who am I talking to and what are their pro, uh, their priorities? So every conference that you go to is your sharpening the saw so that when you get an opportunity, it could be a private equity firm brings you a deal 
that you you know and you know all the right questions to know is this the right structure what kind of exit is is it uh, maybe they're putting 80 percent equity and you turn it down that just saved you five years of pain so it could be knowing what you what not what you don't want that's not worth your time so part your part of this game is developing the distinctions to know what works and not so you have again a great exit. Um, one of the things I, I want to encourage you to be doing here to make get the most out of the conference is build your own group. Each of you, um, uh, each of you, um, you're in, you're assigned to a group with someone who's just a bit ahead of you, or some people here are they're on their ninth or tenth conference. Okay, why? Because they're here to learn here to grow their private equity network, here to grow, they get farther along in the deal process. They want the group mindset to do it. You're going to be assigned to someone who is, they've been to uh, um, a, some sort of conference before, and they're going to be facilitating that group. Take advantage of it. The other way to take advantage of this group is, Chris Melton, do we have a a list that we're going to be sending out with everyone's LinkedIn profile, phone numbers, emails to everyone. Uh, he can't speak. Okay, he can't speak. But the, we'll get you a list with all the different LinkedIn profiles and then restart reaching out with each other. If you see there's another subgroup you want to create, reach out. Take ownership and use this group to forward your learning forward all your other goals and what you can do for each other. Okay, there's a question in the chat. Someone just asked, what is that? Um, what's the question? Let's see. Does cash flow include accumulated net income before? Uh, well, that you're talking about EBITDA. So cash on cash returns, very simple. I'm, I don't want to go uh, down the rabbit hole with this um, because there's many ways to cut it. If private equity firms buys a company for $20 million, that's the enterprise value. And uh, then they put 10 million equity and the rest is debt. They want 30 million back. That's the minimum underwriting. So your deal thesis and part of the language that you're wanting to talk about is cash on cash return. When you articulate your past work and exits, they're going to be listening to what was the cash and cash returns. So great question from John there on that. Okay, now going back uh, to all this, and again, you don't have to remember this. We record it and we get it you back to. Okay, what are some other notes? Okay, so build your own groups. If you're not in a group, at, reach out to Chris Melton, folks. I'm only the um, I'm the adjunct professor. That's it. That is my role. Um, uh, so anything administrative and whatnot, uh, you know, what group you're in, all that, don't ask me. I don't know. I and I bear. I my only job is to be your river guide for this. Okay. So a con. So review all the LinkedIn profiles is one of your next agenda items. And then start thinking, what can I offer these people? What do you want to have to offer? And um, you already heard from Dave, my partner here. Dave, what's your offer to people? One of the things you like to offer the folks in the conference is have a dialogue about what? Go ahead and mention that again to them. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to offer a thesis workshop for anybody who's interested and you can either jump okay. into my group on Thursday mornings or we can okay. schedule one on one time. OK, great. I love it. OK, so by the way, a thesis, we're going to be getting into that in just a moment. If you go into the agenda, perfect lead in, Dave. Thank you. You're always spot on. Get your deal thesis done, folks. Don't spend more than two hours. The goal is to take your ideas. Take a look right now in the link, and it says Blackmore Partners, why have a deal thesis? Okay, go ahead and find that. That was in the inside the invitation. 
I'm going to put it up on my screen. Uh, there we go. Tell me uh, if you see this, Dave. So a deal thesis, pri private equity firms are lean and mean. They don't have time to meet with you. They don't need executives. They've got them lined out their doors. As far as the eye can see, they get thousands, you know, private equity firm, each partner might get, you know, hundreds a month, thousands over the, over the course of a year. And with all execs doing the same thing, get, I'm a great operator, give me a portfolio company. They just don't have time. That's not their priority. Their priority is raising money for their next fund, having great exits, finding new deals, finding add-ons, and hopefully not having to replace an executive in their deal. They would love it to just sit back. They're investors. You're, what can you do to make their job easier? <laughs> and first step is they don't know. They know these P firms, even though ever they would love for you to just go here, here's a beautiful deal. And by the way, if even if you have a deal, doesn't mean you can get a meeting with them, doesn't mean it's the right one for them. Private equity firms have such idiosyncratic criteria, it'll make your head spin. Why is it that, you know, Elaine and I, when we're shopping for monies on a deal which has a great return, we have to we start with 200 P firms that do deals in that niche. We have date, we have everything codified. So if we have a challenge down and that maybe we get five. Um, five that really say, okay, this is a fit for us out of 200 because the nuances that you just can't distinguish to have conversations. And this is why a deal thesis is a device to begin to get to demonstrate your how you think, your foresight, and your understanding of market nuances. It helps you stand out from the crowd. It gets you to the door, maybe a little bit inside the door. Let's talk to this guy. I'll spend 15 minutes in the private equity world. When I'm at DealMax, I think my meetings, I think my meetings are 10 minutes each. So I will have anywhere from fifth uh, over those two and a half, three days, I will have at least 50 meetings. Right now I have 50 and I hope more. It is, I've got it down to that 10 minutes about what can I do for them. OK, and that is what we're training you to deal with is the environment is building your funnel of P firms to get sticky, stay sticky. And step one is your deal of thesis. So this link is in there and about what it shows you're you're developing, you're showing your communication skills, you're showing your how you do risk management, you're demonstrating value cre creation, you're demonstrating that you can see where trends are. And this is why you want to be talking to owners, because the owners are your real time feet on the street. So how do you get these list of owners? You send me an email that says codes and and then put four NAICS codes. Okay, It's that easy. And we'll, we have a research team that is going to help you start building out that list so you can get real time market information so it's hard to get any further if you're just a, i want a job executive with private equity it's a, you know it's just everything's going to have to align perfectly to do that it's possible and we'll talk about those strategies but highly unlikely okay so the deal thesis uh go to the deal thesis workshop so now um so another reason as you talk to these owners, these owners give you real-time market conditions. You're building relationships for them because maybe someday they're going to sell and you want to be the guy they come to. Also, you can sell them consulting, okay? Um, so build your brand proposition for private equity. That's part of the way to get the part of the reason why you're in conferences. Not one, not two, not three. It is part of the world of private equity, period. So um, talk to PE in a way that speaks to them.
Okay, so here's an article I wrote. These are all under Blackmore Times, under Blackmore Partners, Inc., okay? So we have a whole type, um, whole process for, when you're at a PE conference, you get 30 seconds to establish credibility and where they want to go more. So you're hitting the notes perfectly. You're showing that you are the top in your opera class in the ability to sing and be versatile in your niche. And basically, you, your background, you set the stage. Uh, you want to be able to talk about, hey, I have a tar Why Another reason why you want to have a funnel of owners is I have, um, uh, I want to acquire an XYZ company and, you know, that's 3 million to 5 million EBITDA in a space that is fragmented and blah, blah, blah. You got to know what that mama and apple pie of the lower middle market is. So that you're going to be learning about that. Briefly introduce the target company and its industry. If you do have a target company, if not, you're just talking broadly. Uh, key financials, revenue, I'm looking for 3 to 15. Uh, it has to have 20% EBITDA margins, financial stability, pathway to growth. You know, these are key words that you're going to learn how to hit in th all in 30 seconds. So this is in your toolbox, folks. It's in your toolbox. So uh, let's see. So the, here's a guide, okay, um, on your journey to private equity. It takes time. This is a design effort, folks. You're building a formidable house. If you, any of you have built a, a house from scratch, you build, you start with the architecture, right? And, and then you iterate as you go. It, the house doesn't just get, at, get there day one. You know, it might take six months. It might take 12 months. It might take longer, depending on what kind of, of architecture a journey you have. Let's talk about that. Here's another article about your guide to navigating the lower middle market. Again, lower middle market, 3 to 15 million EBITDA. These are some of the key things. This is a journey, not a destination. Avoid the job maker, uh, job seeker mindset and the actions. Private equity firms, they come to us after conference. Oh, these people, this guy and this guy, they're just a job seeker. We don't want to talk to them. They want from us 100% perfection. They only have eight to 10 meetings in that day. And for them, eight to 10 meetings, 15 minutes each, that's like hours to them. In private equity time, 15 minutes is two hours to them. They could be working on vetting another deal. Time, they cannot replace themselves, folks. It is a very, very skilled uh, mindset that takes years and years and years and years to develop. And that's why private equity firms do so much succession planning. They want to keep that firm going. The investors want to keep that firm going. So they're constantly moving people up so that there's continuity of leadership. Each fund is 10 years, and then they want to go on to the next one, the next one, the next one. They want to be around forever, and so do the investors. So avoid the job seeker mindset. Build your personal brand so that it fits PE. It's not what you think. The power of PE conferences, you hear that over and over. Understanding the PE environment, differentiating your, yourself as an executive. Lots of good here. Lots of good stuff here. Okay. Let's go back to this, okay? So it is 12 to 24 months. If you're a person is I, I need it, I need it now, private equity is not going to be for you. It's too transactional. They are very relationship-oriented. They want to take time to get to know you, okay? Um, so let's talk about that. So a lot of executives go, well, if I, you know, you can work on the getting hired time frame. And this is a whole article about this, okay? In a highly world of competitive world of private equity, understanding the timeline of a firm's operations, the P operations is key. And they operate on three distinct 18 month time frames when acquiring a company. So typically, if you want to, uh, uh, as one of your processes, to be uh, up for CEO roles, is you need to find private equity firms that have acquired a company within maybe six to 18 months, there are changes. Uh, typically, they like to keep the executive team on. Uh, 
because they want to know where the bones are buried. These small companies, these three to $15 million EBITDA companies are missing a lot of explicit knowledge turned into process. So if you get rid of a key player, things disappear and you start going downwards. You've all seen that. So there's different acquisition times. So if you want to go down the PE path to just get a job, that's fine. But know what kind of PE firm to look for. Typically, first 18 months is when the first change comes about. Okay. So this article talks about it. Read it. Um, uh, because, again, I can talk about these things, but on a very high level, just because these workshops are only an hour to hour and a half. Um, OK, let's talk about networking. Once again, this is an article where I get lay out the case of building 200. So many executives I talk to. Oh, yeah, I know three. I know five. I know 10, 20. So last year I had over a thousand in-person meetings with private private equity, another thousand probably or more follow up meetings and other meetings that I they weren't at conferences. They were were out shopping a deal. Two hundred. Why? You've got to get into their brain. You've got to test your value proposition. You've got to find out the things that matter. So it becomes part of your playbook. You're training yourself. You're building the muscle. You're getting cross fit, folks. So I talk about the reasons. Again, this isn't designed by me. This is from the private equity on the court knowledge about why you want to build these things. And by the way, there's, you know, there's, an, the, uh, there's the old uh, story. It goes back to Grecian times when uh, a farmer had a calf that would never go in the pen with the rest of the cattle. So the farmer, from when it was a little baby, would lift it over the fence. Um, and then you see a picture of, you know, uh, three years later, that calf is about a thousand pounds. And that, that the same guy is still lifting the bull or the, the cow over the fence. You're building muscle. It will pay off in spades later. And this, this where it pays off is exit money, a real exit. OK, a real exit. So I go over all this here with you okay let's go back now okay uh okay so what do you want to spend you need to uh, spend money in private equity to go to conferences to build your knowledge to get out there meeting with private equity again through us maybe you can get it uh, discounted because when i go to conferences i get when i bring extra people with me extremely discounted pairs. So the payback is massive and you want to keep your eye on the prize, folks, is you're building the muscles to have real equity that matters, not B equity, not C equity. Okay, that's not working. I don't know why. But uh, so there's an article here. I'm going to open it in a new tab. There we go. Okay, and I go over the math mathematics, a W-2 role and what you're making salary and if you would earn $1.5 million and blah, blah, blah. So I go over the mathematics, study the mathematics. I have other articles that I put here. You want to keep your mind on the mathematics or you're going to quit this process. 99% of the executives quit this process. Why? Is because they just go, oh, it's too hard, or you know, this is. I'm gonna. I just want a job. If Gerald, if you, when you and Elena do one of your deals, just call me. You know, P firms. The moment they hear that from an executive, you are gone, wiped from their database. No kidding, because it just says, give me mindset instead of let's roll up our sleeves together. And it's you, VC folks. So many of you are here, have lived in the VC world, and you're transitioning here. You understand that type of mindset with your own employees who are just kind of uh, uh, just sitting back waiting for something to be given. Private equity, they don't have the time. They don't have the resources. A P firm only has 15 people. It's not their money, folks. They look at every dollar. They're the hold call. They see themselves as an expense. Okay. So the payoff is big. Conferences are the most expedient way 
to build your private equity relationship. And here's and here's and here's one way to do it. This is another article I wrote on it. Understanding you need to understand P from strategies. We're going to be getting into this in the conference again. Every conference is different, so some we some things we do deeper on each of these things, and sometimes we go less on them. But you got to build that funnel, okay? You got to have a funnel P from that match your industry and expertise. Very important. Then the middle, right? And maybe only 40% are looking for something at any time. It all depends on how many uh, portfolio companies, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, I do kind of some of the uh, kind of the uh, follow the funneling strategies here. Again, your mileage may vary. It all depends on your skill. You know, if you're nailing your top of mind pitches and talking their language and able to quickly pivot in the middle of conversation, your numbers are going to go up, okay, in being relevant, okay? Uh, what do conferences uh, uh, cost? Again, folks, I'm on, um, I'm on the ACG membership committee, so that's probably why it goes so much, but we were sponsoring, this is just a few of them, ACG DealMax, Philly, ACG Chicago, ACG Detroit. These are all different conferences. They're one to three days where uh, the whole ecosystem uh, shows up. You want to go swim in the world because it gets you in the language. The best way to learn a language is be in the culture. Now, with that said, I've been living in Mexico uh, with, and I go to, and I apply to the U.S. for conferences. And not uh, full disclosure, I don't speak a, <laughs> a bit of the language. But what I do is I have great people. I have eleven people uh, in various offices here, and the, and they all speak English. So. Uh, that's what I'm I'm good at, you know, so uh, I'm good at sign language. I'm good at pointing, you know, the basics, El Bano. But in the private equity world, given that you speak English, you can convert your background into private equity ease. Going to the conferences, do that. And they typically range from two to four grand estimated total cost. It depends. Right. But more is better. And it is getting noisy out there as the economy continues to implode, whether or not you believe it's imploding, I see the numbers. The money supply is being sucking sound, and it eventually uh, you can't get debt, or debt becomes more expensive. There's more risk. There's more companies in bankruptcy, which is also opportunities, folks. But you got to get through the noise. So as the noise gets higher, you got to be sharper. So you want to overweight on conferences. Start getting to these ACG conferences. Go to your local chapter meetings, meet your network. What they're going to be saying to you when you go to these chapters, hey, what can I do for you? What do you need? Everything starts with your deal thesis. Okay. Uh, there's super return conferences. There's deal sources. That's another type like deal max is a deal source. There's the PEI conferences. They're the most expensive, but oh my gosh, the people you get to meet, great networking. Uh, Capital Roundtable, M&A, Blackmore Connects. Blackmore Connects is probably the least cost, mostly because you don't have all you don't have those extra uh, in, in uh, um, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, in, uh, extra cost, plane travel and uh, incidentals. So, folks, I I hope today gave you a little sense. Of the six of what you need to be successful with conferences in general, give me a hand raise if you think that's correct. If I gave you a better sense, give me one of those hand raises so I can get a sense. Okay, yeah, Jonathan, good, thank you, everybody. All right, guys, that's it. I like to end on time. Always get on these conferences early, and we'll see you at our next one. We're going to be for the people that weren't here. We're going to probably be doing another one of these. And thank you to my partner in this, Dave, who's going to be working with you on deal thesis workshops. But get me a deal thesis. It only takes two hours. Bye.